Welcome this is lecture number 56. In this lecture we are going to talk about performance improvement and size reduction using large signal based control. So in this lecture we will first summarize uh, small signal versus large signal based tuning performance summary and we will initially show uh, simulation result uh, using load transient for load transient as well as reference transient for a buck converter using voltage mode as well as current mode control. Then I will talk about the reference transient of a boost converter using current mode control that comparison and then finally I want to show experimental result of some fixed frequency uh, as well as the variable frequency small signal and large signal tuning. Okay? So then I want to show the reduction in voltage deviation in voltage in deviation in buck and boost converter then peak current limit if we impose then what is the imp impact on the transient response because we need to achieve time optimal recovery using large signal transient or large signal tuning. But that will come with a price of somewhat higher current overshoot but if you impose a current limit then we want to see what is the performance uh, with then current limit. Then we want to summarize the performance improvement and size reduction. So the parameter for comparison first we want to talk about the recovery time because this is very important this recovery time because it represent the speed of the response and this is somewhat similar to settling time because if, if that can be reduced then the converter can respond to frequent load or reference transient. Okay, so that is the requirement from the application end. Then the number of switching event during a large signal recovery. So if you can reduce the number of switching event then we can even reduce the switching losses right uh, because the driver loss and switching loss and by that way we can in fact save or you can improve the energy efficiency. Then we can also improve or reduce the voltage undershoot and overshoot and which is linked with the output capacitor. So if we can reduce the voltage undershoot or overshoot either you know within the acceptable range we may have a freedom to reduce further reduce the capacitor because suppose if your specification is let us say 200 millivolt for 1 volt power supply. And suppose if we could achieve up to 100 millivolt reduction like a undershoot then we can further reduce the capacitor by almost half. So that will increase the power density. The peak current sometime we will see that is another factor because in this large signal tuning since it is going for time optimal control you may have a high peak current and that we should uh, you know that may require higher rating of the inductor and the switches. But if we incorporate current limit then you do not need to bother because if you are talking about current mode control you can always put a current limit and this current limit will try to extract the best performance within the range of within the current bound right and that can be achieved using our optimal tune. And finally we want to evaluate what is the complexity of the solution because that is linked with silicon area power. Uh, you know power budget as well as the scalability. Okay, now we want to show the benefit of large signal tuning over small signal tuning. Here we are talking about current mode control it is mentioned here you know we are talking about current mode control for both cases. But in large signal tuning we have computed and in current mode control that means for let us say this is our one case and this is number two. So for case one we are taking current mode control with with uh, type type two type two type 2 compensator whereas the second case we are talking about current mode control with PI controller and the load current is going from changing from from it changes from 1 ampere to 21 21 ampere sorry. 21 ampere. So our load step size for all the case study that we are going to show for buck converter loads 
transient is a 20 ampere load step cell. You can see the, the optimal large signal tuning is achieved, it, it can achieve one switching action, one switching action it reaches here, right. Whereas, in case of current mode control regular, it takes multiple switching cycle and the output voltage comes up to 0 0.9 volt for the large signal tuning and this it can come up to 0.65 volt. That means, the undershoot for this case undershoot will be 0 0.1 volt and here it will be 0 0.35 volt. Okay? Now, if you summarize the performance, the recovery time for large signal tuning is 6 microsecond over 400 microsecond even small signal tuning. Number of switching cycle is a 3 switching cycle using large signal tuning and because the and here it will be because 2 microsecond is my time period. So, in this case it will be over you can say 100, 200 cycle using small signal tuning. Okay. Voltage undershoot is improved by from 0.35 volt to 0.1 volt and the but the peak current increases from 22 ampere to 28 ampere. So, you may put a current limit and then the algorithm in regular like a for the large, large signal tuning we are using a load current fit forward whereas the small signal tuning we are not using any load current it is a traditional current mode control. So, this load current you may either require to sense load current which is not recommended or you can use a load estimator and that if you go for digital control that load estimator you can put an algorithm to estimate load. In fact, you know if you are talking about the power supply for processor, if you use a digital control platform and if you can interact or interface with the power supply and the processor and if there is a task scheduler which can give a priori information that a new task is coming with this much of uh, energy requirement, voltage and current requirement. So, then you can extract what will be my low step transient that is going to come. So, that estimation that load information also can be extracted indirectly from the processor, but otherwise you can put a load estimator. In case of LED driving application, you can get this load information from if you using a PWM dimming, each of this uh, you know LED string will have their nominal current. So, once you turn on that string, then you know the nominal current is my required current. So, that can be indirectly obtained by looking at the switching status of the particular string and there that load estimation can be done very easily. But if I incorporate load current fit forward in regular current mode control and tuning optimal tuning or already it is you know I would say um, it is opt already a load fit forward is there. But you see this small you know an overshoot came in that time optimal tuning because we are using a fixed frequency modulator right. So, the fixed frequency modulator we have a time constraint because it has to be again turned on when the next clock edge come. So, due to this time constraint of the modulator it may not be exactly optimal it is something called proximate time optimal. But now you can look at the load fit forward using current mode. It is fast, but it requires multiple switching action and the voltage comes close to steady state here. So, this is our recovery time. It is like almost 10 microsecond for the conventional current mode control in small signal model design, but with load fit forward. And because of this multiple switching action, you may you know end up with little bit little bit more. Uh, switching loss during the transient recovery. Okay, but it is good a load fit forward. But if you are going for different load step size, different input voltage condition, then there can be di these two response will diverge because under and we will see this uh, you know maybe uh, we have seen earlier that if your input voltage decreases, then simple load fit forward in current mode control may not give this kind of response because then your optimal tuning can achieve really fast transient response. So, the benefit of load fit forward in this case 6 microsecond over 10 microsecond uh, that is improved 
the large signal tuning only takes three switching cycle the voltage under should be same this 0.1 volt peak current nearly the same 25 28 ampere and here we can use a load estimator for each cases but we can put a peak current limit and see what is the performance now if we remove load fit for for both the cases so it is current mode control in the first case when you are using conventional tuning we are using type 2 that means number 1 number 2 number 1 we are using type 2 compensator and number 2 we are using simply pi controller then you can see that pi controller with optimal k given because if optimal gain we obtain incorporating load fit forward but suppose we retain the gain and we remove the load fit forward you can see the undershoot is reduced i mean it is reduced by almost 100 millivolt that means both without load fit forward and both cases recovery time more or less same is like a they are almost reaching 1 volt after this much time but number of switching circuits are also same but the voltage under should improve from 0.25 to point sorry 0.35 to 0.25 so that can be reduced so that means this tuning can be used to even improve the performance of current mode control even there is no load fit for all and the peak currents are nearly same around 25 ampere if you go back they are almost same like a 25 ampere okay and you can also require current limit if you want to impose but 25 ampere for 21 ampere nominal current is acceptable is much within the limit and the algorithm both are using simple current mode there is no load fit forward now if you are comparing want to compare voltage mode control so this is under voltage mode control where both proposed tuning that means large signal tuning i would say this is large signal and this is a small signal uh, sorry this is a small signal large signal so this is a small signal tuning this is a large signal tuning so for case 1 we are using type 3 compensator because we have discussed a type 3 compensator can achieve fast transient for a voltage mode control where it is better than PID controller because of the additional pole that we have discussed and I think this part was covered in lecture number 35 where we saw in 34 we use a PID controller there is a model validity issue and using type 3 compensator we can speed up the response but with this but now in second case we are using simple PID controller that means in small signal model we saw PID controller was not good enough we, were, we, go, we go for type 3 compensator but when you come to large signal model the PID controller itself is enough and it results into time optimal recovery you see it is just it is reaching in two switching cycle just two switching cycle it speed up very fast transient response whereas the voltage mode control take lot of lot of time because in the load transient response you know the output impedance has a problem here right so in proposed tuning both are under voltage mode it takes only 6 microsecond perhaps it could be 4 because you know maybe if we include this 6 microsecond using large signal over 200 microsecond using small signal tuning so it's a significant improvement and the large signal tuning only take three switching cycle and the overshoot is drastically reduced from 370 millivolt to 100 millivolt and the peak current in both cases are more or less same if you go back their peak current are more or less same around 28 ampere but since there is no uh, current sensor here so we cannot impose any current limit and algorithm it is a simple voltage mode control nothing then if we go for a reference transient using current mode control so this is using because here there is no role in fit forward load fit forward because it is a reference transient there is no change in the load current here in case of traditional current mode control where we consider one tenth of the switching frequency this is number one and number two here you using optimal tuning so again for the first case we are using type 2 compensator because it is current mode control it is current mode control and number 2 we are using just pi controller 
with optimal gain. And we achieve the response much faster. That means 4 microsecond using small large signal tuning over 10 microsecond. Number of switching is just 2 cycle to recover, but peak current increases from 6 ampere to 8 ampere that can be reduced by putting a current limit and both cases using simple current mode control technique. There is no load fit for. Now, if we go for voltage mode control reference transient, so here the voltage mode control, you know, in the first case, that means this is number 1, number 2. Again, first case we are using type 3 compensator because we saw type 3 compensator can achieve better bandwidth with one tenth of the switching frequency with model matching. And here it is simply PID controller. And you see the PID controller with optimal large signal tuning, large signal tuning can achieve optimal recovery and it just reaches in 4 microsecond. Whereas, this uh, the other one that small signal model based voltage mode it takes 400 microsecond. So, the recovery time is just 2 switching cycle and but the peak current increases from 6 to 8 ampere. I think that is not significant because you know we have a higher current rating let us say it is a 30 ampere rating. Then algorithm is simple voltage mode control. So, the bottom line is this you can improve the performance significantly. Now, if you take a boost converter, you know the boost converter, this is number 1 and this is number 2, this is number 3. In number 1, we are using, it is current mode control only, we are using type 2 compensator. Type 2 compensator. Number 2, we are using simple PI control. without current limit and 3 PI control with current limit and both using large signal tuning. And you can see the red one which is the optimal tuning with no current limit it is giving time optimal recovery and it is recovering in 5 switching cycles. And our traditional current mode control, it is taking almost, you know, close to, I would say, 0.6. That means here, so it is like a zero point. That means 60 microsecond, which is like 30 cycles. So it is like a 60 microsecond, like a 30 cycle. So it improved by six times. It just recover in five switching cycles, so you can improve the energy efficiency, and the voltage undershoot reduces because in the time interval control since the due to ratio is allowed to saturate and it is increasing and you know during the on time actually your output capacity discharges and if you continue to turn on the switch for longer duration the output voltage will further fall. So, as a result this is in contrast to buck converter in which the time optimal control also ensure the minimum voltage undershoot, but in boost converter the time interval control actually result into larger voltage undershoot because of the non minimum phase behavior. And that can be reduced and also the peak current can be reduced by putting a simple current limit and that exactly I did I just put a 12 ampere current limit in the third case and you see the third case the voltage undershoot is reduced and over the actual optimal where there is no current limit. Okay, so, it is reduced and it can be reduced and it is reduced by almost here it is 0.1. So, that means almost 50 milli, milli volt is reduced and the peak current increases from 10 to 13 ampere from it is going up to 13 ampere and that can be reduced by putting a current limit that we have discussed shown here. But in this algorithm, it is all under current mode control. There is no lead load fit forward, nothing. And only thing we have discussed that we have used a type 2 compensator for regular current mode control and the current mode control with PI controller using large signal tuning. Now, I want to show some boost converter experimental result. So, it is under 400 switching uh, kilohertz switching frequency, 100 microfarad capacitor, 4 micro handy inductor and the 8 volt input 12 volt output. 
This is using small signal tuning in current mode control where your load current increases from, uh, from 0.5 that means it is changing from here to here. This is the inductor current remember average inductor current it is undergoing load step transient and the time optimal recovery it reaches so fast but there is a current limit and also the voltage understood may be large. So, this is already you know these results are taken from this paper and in our paper. So, here we have talked about large signal tuning of voltage mode uh, boost converter in current mode control. Now, if we impose a current and voltage limit then you can drastically reduce the voltage undershoot because just now we discussed in a boost converter if you want to achieve time optimal control it will undergo larger voltage undershoot. But if you impose a voltage undershoot and the current limit then you can drastically reduce it and this is much faster than linear control and that can be shown using this table. So, linear control takes 72 microsecond whereas the 400 kilohertz of switching frequency. So, our time period is 2.5 microsecond is our time period ok and large signal tuning is just taking 8 microsecond and if you put some current and voltage limit it is just taking 11.2 microsecond. So, it is almost more than 6 time improvement even with reduced undershoot because the voltage undershoot can be reduced by putting imposing a voltage constant as well as current constant. We have actually uh, initially applied to a buck converter where we have compared if we take a relay based PID tuning that is a traditional use and we have discussed this relay based tuning in lecture number 34 in a buck converter. And if we use our tuning method where the optimal gain can be very easily framed using current mode control. So, you can improve the settling time or the recovery time by 6 times 6 fold and the voltage undershoot is also reduced from 260 millivolt to 160 millivolt. So, this will enable this enables us to further reduce the capacitor right and the but the current overshoot increases which we can also reduce as I told. So, the current overshoot means we are measuring the current from here to here. So, this we call as a current overshoot. So, this is increased from 1.5 ampere to you know 2.5 ampere if it is within limit fine, but if it is going beyond limit then we need to put a current limit and we saw that with current limit also we get very good response. And another interesting point we have improved the energy efficiency because we have considered 1 kilohertz load frequency that means load step is happening at the rate of 1 kilohertz switching uh, frequency periodically varying and this load step up step down it is happening and under such condition we got improvement in efficiency almost more than 4 percent and that I saw I told because you see during this recovery process you have so many cycle turn on turn off number of switching that also reduces our switching. Uh, you know increases switching losses and driver loss whereas it is only one switching action and this is results are taken from this paper and where we have discussed in detail. We have applied this tuning also for a boost two phase boost converter where we have designed a current mode control and this is using a GAN based architecture where we have operated close to 500 kilohertz switching frequency and if we go for large signal tuning in two phase boost converter we got almost optimal recovery near to optimal recovery and where the recovery time we improve by 12 times voltage understood is reduced by 2 times and the energy efficiency we got higher energy efficiency if there are frequent load transient because here the number of switching happening because there are number of phases are more right. So, here 2 phases means both the switches will be turned on and off multiple time. So, you can get even more benefit when you go for such large signal control for multi phase where the number of phase increases because all the phases the number of switching even can be drastically reduced by this large signal tuning and this has been reported in multi phase in, in our paper. So, the large signal tuning we also applied in cascade because we discuss if we take 2 and here it is a buck converter you have considered here also we consider a POL buck converter ok. So, two stage we have considered only these two stages 
may be, but there can be n number of stages and this method can be extended. So, here this waveform shows the inductor current of the first stage that means and this waveform shows the inductor current of the second stage and this is the output voltage of the intermediate bus that means I am talking about this bus and this is the output voltage of the POL that means its output voltage where it is connected to the load ok connected to the load. You see the response is extremely fast and there is a power step transient or load step transient at this second stage we are applying a load step transient and we have discussed in the earlier lecture that if you optimally get both are operating under current mode control but digital current mode control where we have used PI controller for both the cases and the PI controller gains are optimally tuned and that we have discussed in the previous lecture for cascaded converter and if we plug in those PI controller then we can achieve uh, you know fast uh, optimal recovery for both the stages and it can really speed up the recovery and it is the fastest response that we can achieve in this two stage architecture. So, time optimal recovery for both IBC and POL and this has been reported in this paper. So, we have experimentally demonstrated uh, for a wide range of we have tested this for our normal buck converter, we have tested for boost converter and we have tested for multi phase also multi phase plus single phase. Then we have considered non inverting bug boost where you know in this APEC 2021 we have published that non inverting bug boost we can change mode from bug to boost, boost to bug or bug boost by optimal tuning you can apply just by simply changing the gain and current mode control we need to update the proportional gain that is it. So, and then we have extended as I said that it can be applied for variable frequency control. So, here if we take a constant here it is like a constant off time control, constant off time control. Here we are using a with PI voltage controller and we are using the discrete time it is like a discrete time is a discrete time PI because it is digital current mode control we are talking about ok. See in constant off time we know that there is a problem in the step down or basically off time there is a minimum on time that we have to provide and that is somewhat slowing down the response otherwise while it is going up it is very fast extremely fast and that is the optimal solution. But some non optimality or few more switching can come due to that minimum on time because we are not adapting the on time. But I will show you if you adapt this on time then it is possible to actually make this transition fast. Another way if you go for step down transient and it is constant on time this is all digital I would say digital digital current mode control here also with discrete time discrete time pi voltage controller here also we have some sort of minimum you can see minimum on off time that is probably provided for in constant on time and this is also minimum off time on time that is provided in constant off time current mode control. And because of that there is a slight you know degradation in the response, but it is ok. 
So, this also these results are taken from this epic paper we have presented here that our optimal tuning can be applied to variable frequency control constant on time off time even we can we have also applied in hysteresis control, but I am not going to show all the results. Then if we hybridize that means if we take even with time adaptation that means if we take constant off time uh, you know uh, digital current mode control here and here if you take constant on time digital current mode control. But you see we have removed the minimum on time part here. So, we meet some adaptation. in on time I would say minimum on time because we have simply disabled the minimum on time operation during the transient recovery. But yes it is restored near the steady state. Now you may ask me how do you identify transient and steady state because when you go for digital control we generally take the sample output voltage right and then we take inside the digital platform and we subtract that output voltage from the reference voltage and the error voltage will provide some quantized value that means if you take the error voltage error voltage let us say it is 9 bit 2s complement format. Now by looking into the lower bit you can identify whether you know it is the error is large or small if the error is large then you can identify there is a large tangent the error is small and you wait for some few cycle then you can identify it is steady state and then you can restore this on time again. And here also we have eliminated the minimum of time as a result we are getting time optimal recovery is in tangent and we got you know without adaptation we got 300 and 200 millivolt response time. So, the output understood does not change because in both cases this is fast very fast. But with adaptation we got some improvement in the settling time because this part can be improved compared to our previous case where we got some slow recovery due to some additional switching. So, that can be reduced and also you can further reduce the losses during this small part where the switching event can be avoided. And this also results we have taken from this epic paper. So, summary of improvement using large signal tuning. We can improve the recovery time and by that way we can significantly reduce the recovery time and so number of cycles can be reduced. As a result the speed of the converter or you can think of in terms of bandwidth because it is not applicable it is a nonlinear switching model the recovery time is very fast. So, this converter can handle more frequent transient. Since the number of switching event was drastically reduced. So, you can save you can achieve higher energy efficiency. So, that under frequent load transient your converter efficiency can be improved over a conventional linear control. Voltage undershoot overshoot can be reduced that we have discussed in buck converter in boost we can put a current limit and this reduction allow us to further reduce the capacitor because in majority of the commercial product actually uh, now the all the recent trend in power management product to cope up with the performance requirement they use two different controller one is small signal controller during steady state and large signal controller during transient because the large signal controller mainly variable frequency control where they do not want to operate uh, variable frequency under steady state. So, they integrate and that increases the size silicon area and the complexity and it may lead to some controller transition problem and all. But here the large signal tuning is a single controller it is either current mode or voltage mode. it is a single controller there is no separate requirement for additional controller. But you can configure this controller by using the same resource just by changing the modulation like we can change it from constant off time to constant on time and so on because your controller is common that means your control voltage is common or con reference current is common and only the change in modulator will not make the system because there is something called 
wind up problem when there is a change in controller suppose you are going from large signal control to small signal suddenly you enable and the integrator error can become very large and it can even make the additional transient due to the controller change but here such problem will not happen because it is a single controller and where either we can initiate the integral action throughout or in some cases we can stop uh, you know incrementing during the recovery process. Peak current was higher but we have shown that by putting a peak current limit we can get close to near optimal recovery subject to the current limit that is simply but the gain will remain same. So that is the beauty here and the algorithm this is simple current mode and voltage mode control we can apply this tuning method. So there is no additional complexity there is no additional large signal small signal combination and this itself will act like a multi mode controller. And this technique is scalable because since we are just changing the gain it is just the viewpoint change of the controller tuning instead of using small signal linear model we are going for large signal model and that can take into account the performance ripple information and you can push the performance up to the slew rate limit. And we have shown this can be extended to constant on off time control it we have shown also earlier. Uh, although not demonstrated in this lecture but in our research paper that this can be easily applied to hysteresis control. In fact the switching control is started with the hysteresis control where we have formulated the gain. So naturally this can be applied to hysteresis control. So this technique is scalable you know you can go to any modulation or control strategy and you do not need to make any additional changes only you need to keep a set of gains for different operating condition. Uh, and that is what we do even for regular uh, small signal model where we up, we load some parameter value from a lookup table. Same thing can be done uh, but this can achieve very fast transient and high energy efficiency with smaller size capacitor. So in summary the performance summary we discussed the small signal versus large signal based tuning method. We show we have shown that the reduction in voltage deviation in buck and boost converter can be achieved and there is a peak current limit we can impose and we still can achieve very fast transient subject to the current limit and we have summarized the performance improvement as well as the size reduction and this can be useful for achieving higher efficiency faster recovery and smaller size power converter for future power management solution. So with this I want to finish it here thank you very much.